What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to my review of SmackDown. This is the Go Home Show before Extreme Rules on Saturday. I got a lot of reviews to get to before I get to Extreme Rules, because whether it, whether it be SmackDown or that Rampage and uh, Battle of the Belts, basically it's a two-hour Rampage when you look at it. And I got a Bound for Glory co review coming for you, okay? I'm going to try to do all this before Extreme Rules, because I got a lot to say about a lot of these shows. But this is technically the season premiere of SmackDown, which... I always never thought that made any sense, but they try to make this look big as possible. We kicked it off with Triple H out there. Triple H was out there cutting a promo. Basically, fans chanted for him. Um, Triple H says there will be a time when you believe everything is finished, but that is the beginning. Welcome to Fox. Welcome to season premiere of SmackDown. The Bloodline came out then as, uh, well, now we have new commentators now. Uh, good Lord, these people need Pat McAfee back, but... All the commentary teams have changed. So for SmackDown now, you have Michael Cole and Wade Barrett. For Raw, you have Corey Graves and Kevin Patrick. I'm almost surprised they didn't put Saxton there back on Raw. Maybe they just don't want Corey Graves burying him all the time. But then again, like Kevin Patrick was announcing in the back. I think he's been there a couple times. Maybe he was on main event or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really seen much of the guy on commentary. Wow, like the sun just went so uh, dark right there. You could would have thought I would have said Alexa lights off or something like that. But now let there be light, okay? Uh, with the lights now back. Wow, you see how I just like, I could have said Alexa lights off, but no, it didn't do that, okay? I guess that wasn't me. But yes, uh, Raw, uh, you have that commentary team. And for NXT, you have Booker T and Vic Joseph. I don't know why, don't know why they just didn't keep Barrett and Joseph together. I thought they worked well on NXT. Um, some people were wondering, you know, where is Nigel McGinnis? Well, Nigel McGinnis got released, okay? And as for Jimmy Smith, he is no longer on Monday Night Raw. Um, seems like an overcast. That's why everything went dark right there for a second. But, um... But yeah, uh, Jimmy Smith left. I, I like Smith. I, I thought he was pretty good. Jimmy Smith wasn't that bad. I'm surprised he actually did leave, though. Uh, some people, well, I'm surprised Triple H hasn't even tried to, you know, rehire Ronaldo or something like that. But, you know, guys got bipolar. He's, he's on HBO show, you know, Showtime Boxing and all that. So um, I don't think he even wants to come back. But, um, uh, but yeah, but, you know, like I said, um, the commentary teams have changed now. Um, and whatnot, uh, we'll see, but, uh, I'm like, you know, they, these people need Pat back on SmackDown with Cole, they really do, but the bloodline was out there, uh, Roman told everyone to acknowledge him, um, you know, Logan Paul came out, who basically got no reaction or got booze out there, fans chanted Logan sucks, they cheered for the bloodline, um, and whatnot, and then, you know, they did the same many years ago, and I'm the greatest of all time now, Roman said. You got a point, though. Like, hey, they did that to me also. But, um, you know, a lot of things, you know, uh, you know, I could teach uh, ball and, you know, arrange some Heyman smarting this boy up. Heyman been, went on to say, you know, who the hell is Logan Paul? And that, you know, Anderson Silva is going to, you know, um, was going to take out Jake Paul and whatnot. Logan Paul, you know, you're just a generation's version of, uh, you know, Mr. T or Cindy Lauper. And, uh, you know, he started naming these other celebrities. I'm, I don't really know much about them, from a Jordan Peterson to a Ben Shapiro and um, Andrew Tate. I, I think I've heard of him. Didn't they, like, try to, like, what, take all his stuff out on the Internet or something like that? I don't know, know much about the guy. I know he owned Pierce Morgan. I saw that on YouTube one time. But I don't know what a lot of these guys even do, but I think he even challenged Jake Paul to a fight. He was a kickboxer or something. I don't know. He could kick his ass, though. So, um, I don't know much about the guy, but that's the only little I know of him. Uh, but, you know, he went on to say all these people would not, you know, go on uh, Roman and go against Roman, and then, you know, you're just a pseudo-celebrity, he said to Logan Paul, a male Kardashian and all that stuff, and you're just gonna lose, and Basically, you know, no one would have the balls to step to Roman, and you know, you you know, um, you're gonna be breathing, you know, tubes throughout a hole and be in a hospital for about three months. Logan basically said, "You really are a wise man and whatnot," but you know, um, you know, I, I want to talk to the tribal chief, talk to Jay uh, Uso. Then Jay started yelling at Logan, and um, you know, Jimmy's trying to hold him back. Range just looked at him then. Which, um, Jay calmed down in, but Sammy like, whoa, 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 let's make Peacemaker here. Which, you know, by the way, the fans chanting Uso and Sammy after that. Um, 
Sammy said, Rain, you know, Rain's the head of the table. No one's trying to question or challenge that. You know, Paul's just trying to get in everybody's heads right now. All right. Uh, and, you know, he's going to lose. All right. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, that's why you are a giant number two and whatnot. He told Logan Paul. And, um, you know, Paul become a number two stain on the bottom of Roman Reigns' shoe after Crown Jewel. Okay. So, uh, Eddie said, you know, because we're the ones. Listen, I've said this before. I don't think anybody wants to see this match. I don't think people care for this match. These people do not like Logan Paul. The the bloodline is basically faces out here by default at this point. They're just faces in this whole thing. Every single one of them um, compared to Roman. Um, I mean, compared to Logan Paul. Like I, I've said, like I've already talked about before. Logan Paul, I think he should be a heel. It will work. People already don't like this guy. I think I'm not, you know, going against what he's done in the ring. I say he's really good in the ring. He's not bad at all. It's just he should not be a face. People generally do not like this. Well, they don't like any of the Paul brothers for multiple counter reasons. But it's like at the same time, yeah, you could sit here and say, oh, you know, well, it's, you know, it's fake. Because I'm sure it's a question. The guy had two matches and why is he getting a, a, a title shot? Well, at least let there be some logic behind it, too. Is it because of a popularity thing? See, you're lucky you're doing this in Saudi Arabia. They, they don't know no better. They cheer for anything, okay? I'm sure they watch it, but they're just happy it's even over there, all right? You do this shit in America, he's going to get booed out the building, and Roman's just basically face. And like I said before, who really wants to see this match? I know they don't have really anybody from Roman right now, but I'm to the point like, this is all you got? This is a joke, right? So, I really question this. So, it's like, I don't really care about this match. Um... Blood money or whatever. Solo Sokoa went against Ricochet right after. I guess everybody left and Solo was there. Solo won clean. And, uh, you know, after dodging the 630, he meant 450. And then uh, he hit his near Nagi and won the match. Sammy and the Bloodline were in the back. So, you know, uh, all the work he's done with Solo's paying off. But Jay said, what, what you mean the work you done? He my brother, man. You, you ain't, he under my wing, okay? He's my brother. But Sammy said, you know, you're being a hothead right now, which, you know, Jay started getting pissed off. And Roman says, you've always been a hothead. You've been a hothead for years. You've been doing it since you were kids, okay? And then Sammy, you Jay's problem now. So right after that then, um, I know the Usos was walking backstage with Sammy Zayn. And then they went to the New Day then, which, um, you know, Jay said, who's your daddy now, Jay? Roman's your daddy. And now Sammy's your daddy. And, you know... Um, and, you know, about, you know, what happened to the main event, Jey Uso, huh? Uh, Sammy went on, you know, said, all right, how about this new day? You guys go find a partner and we'll have a match. Uh, the Usos were like, they didn't want to do that then. Hit Row came out then, who are not over. Definitely not over. Um, next thing you know, uh, well, these masked guys, which end up being Legato del Fantasma, end up beating up Hit Row. I think it's kind of funny that um, Wade Barrett had to act like he didn't know who these people were. Like, dude, you did call their matches in NXT. And they were a few. Let's remember, all these guys weren't a few with each other before, before Hit Row even went to the main roster, okay? Uh, but it was Legato de Fantasma. The only thing is this. There was no um, Electra Lopez. It ended up being Zelina Vega, who was blonde now, which Blake, you know, Zelina Vega, it was already rumored she was coming back anyways. Vega got in the mic, said she didn't come alone. It was Legato, Legato del Fantasma. Uh, I will say this. I don't think they need Zelina as a manager. I think my friend Steven said it best. It's because people know who uh, Zelina is. It'll just, like, we got to put somebody known because nobody's going to know who Legato del Fantasma is. I would have kept Electra Lopez because if I even say who's Electra Lopez, I like think of a more thicker version of um, Zelina Vega and whatnot. I don't think Zelina's been... Well, Zelina's been hurt, I believe, because I think the last time we saw her was her and Carmella teaming up, but... Like I said, she's blonde, and now she's in Legato. Uh, I don't think they need a mouthpiece. I think um, Santos Escobar can speak on his own. We saw that in NXT. I was wondering when they were going to get to the main roster anyways. But yeah, it's just three of them and no Alexa Lopez. And Zelina Vega has now been their replacement. So we'll see where it goes, but I, I am kind of surprised by that. Um, they showed another White Rabbit video. I guess he'll be debuting tonight, tomorrow night, whatever this video is done. So... I think we all know it's Bray Wyatt. Like, I, I've already spoken on the rabbit thing. I didn't fall, you know, pay much attention to it, but I get where it's going. Raquel Gonzalez and um, Shotzi went against Cy Deville and uh, Zia Lee. Raquel number one at the Chikanga Bomb um, and whatnot. Right after that, I know they had a video package for Ronda and uh, Liv Morgan, Extreme Rules. 
Killer Cross came out with Scarlet. They did their entrance. Um, next thing you know, um, Drew McIntyre attacked from behind. He had to fight off security, put the strap on the cross stand and whatnot, but Cross ended up getting the upper hand over um, Drew and whipped him several times in the back with that um, strap as, uh, you know, Drew's back was red. You know, at this point, is Drew really going to win Extreme Rules? Like, you think he win because they can't have Cross lose in his, like, first ever pay-per-view match. But at the same time, Cross has had Drew's number for like, damn, now, I don't even know how many weeks now at this point. But it's like, man, Drew's is getting his ass kicked damn near every week by, every other week by, you know, um, Cross. So when's he going to one-up him? I'm assuming he's going to win. One would think that. But you can't have Cross lose at the same time. Unless this whole Wyatt, Rabbit, whatever the thing shows up, it'll just screw him out of the match and whatever. But still, like, this guy's been getting his ass kicked for weeks now. Um... I know they had, I guess, a Viking Raiders video. I guess one of them been hurt. That's why we haven't seen them or whatnot. Someone, I think someone might have thought that, uh, you know, Sarah Logan was there, KFC Logan. She probably was part of it. I don't know. Um, next, Braun Strowman and The New Day went against The Usos and Sami Zayn. Uh, Strowman, a big reaction. Crazy that Strowman damn near uh, killed Michael Cole. Well, he knocked one of the Usos into Michael Cole, which, you know, Cole fell and clipped his leg, but he still ended up calling the match. Which, you know, I know people don't like Strowman for multiple re reasons, but you have to admit, Braun Strowman is over as hell right now. He is super over, okay? Yeah, you can get mad at the control your narrative thing and maybe a few other things here and there. I'm not even the biggest fan of Braun Strowman. But I'm not going to deny that he's not over, okay? He's really over right now. So, big time. Well, LA Knight, no more Max Supreme, beat up the uh, male model guys. So and don't ever call me that again. He is once again LA Knight, so I'm glad to see that back. Um, in the main event, we did get Walter versus Sheamus 2 for the Intercontinental Championship. Hell of a damn match, okay? Hell of a damn match. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's great as the first one, but still a hot main event, okay? I enjoyed this, even though it's kind of crazy. Someone thinks we were kind of repeating themselves because we did the Clash the Castle. You did it on SmackDown. It didn't get all, you know, it's not one-on-one -on, -one on Extreme Rules, but all the whole crew's going to fight each other again. So why do an Intercontinental title match here and not do it on the pay-per-view? I feel like they only did it for the show because they needed the ratings for the season premiere and they got to put something big on. Yes, um, you know, Imperium and the Brutes came out brawling with each other. Um, I think Eichner ended up giving um, Walter the, the shillelagh and, um, you know, end up just damn that lariat, hit a big-ass lariat with that shillelagh on to Sheamus, just, you know, taking him out, winning the match. But right after Walter stood tall, as everybody just kept brawling as the show went off the air again. So, hell of a match, though, okay? Hell of a damn match, and uh, I'm sure people thought Sheamus was going to win here. Like I said, this was great. These guys beat the living hell out of each other. I enjoyed this a lot, okay? I just like, you know, we're going to see these guys again tomorrow night in a, some whatever Downey Rules match or whatever extreme, some extreme rules match. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But I thought the season premiere was not bad. Like I said, Legato Del Fantasma debut and Selena Vega return. Walter versus Sheamus 2. Uh, I don't care much of the beginning segment, but yeah, the bloodline was over. Um, I thought Strowman and him was pretty over, so, you know, SmackDown was SmackDown, okay? But we will have an Extreme Rules review for Sunday, though, I will say that. Hopefully, it's a joint review. I'm looking forward to that, so we'll see what happens. But other than that, I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at HoodTonight890. We got two other reviews coming for you before this day is over or before Extreme Rules, so it's going to be a lot more coming in. But I'm out of here. I'll see y'all then. Peace out.